Hi everyone and welcome to Evening Prayer. Today, Tuesday the 8th of September 2020. Um, I'm following the app on my phone, Daily Prayer from the Church of England, and I'll put the link underneath the video. Today we are commemorating the birth of the Blessed Virgin Mary. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. O oh God, will you not give us life again, that your people may rejoice in you? Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Truly his salvation is near to those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth are met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness look down from heaven. Righteousness shall go before him and direct his steps in the way. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. The psalm today is a very short little extract. It's from Psalm 134 and the refrain is, Bless the Lord, O my soul. Come bless the Lord, all you servants of the Lord, you that by night stand in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands towards the sanctuary and bless the Lord. The Lord who made heaven and earth give you blessing out of Zion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Guard all your household, Lord, through the dark of night of faith and purify the hearts of those who wait on you until your kingdom dawns with the rising of your Son, Christ the morning star. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. The first reading today is from the book of Proverbs, chapter 25. With patience, a ruler may be persuaded and a soft tongue can break bones. If you have found honey, eat only enough for you or else having too much, you will vomit it. Let your foot be seldom in your neighbor's house. Otherwise, the neighbor will become weary of you and hate you. Like a war club, a sword or a sharp arrow is one who bears false witness against a neighbour. Like a bad tooth or a lame foot is trust in a faithless person in time of trouble. Like vinegar on a wound is one who sings songs to a heavy heart. Like a moth in clothing or a worm in wood, sorrow gnaws at the human heart. If your enemies are hungry, give them bread to eat, and if they are thirsty, give them water to drink. For you will heap coals of fire on their heads, and the Lord will reward you. The north wind produces rain, and a backbiting tongue, angry looks. It is better to live in a corner of the housetop than in a house shared with a contentious wife. Like cold water to a thirsty soul, so is good news from a far country. Like a muddied spring or a polluted fountain are the righteous who give way before the wicked. It is not good to eat much honey, or to seek honour on top of honour. Like a city breached without walls is one who lacks self-control. Next is the canticle. I saw the holy city coming down out of heaven from God. I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them and they shall be his peoples and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain any more, for the former things have passed away. And the one who sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. To the one who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honour and glory and might for ever and ever. Amen. I saw the holy city coming down out of heaven from God. 
The second reading is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 8. They came to Bethsaida. Some people brought a blind man to him and begged him to touch him. He took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the village. And when he had put saliva on his eyes and laid his hands on him, he asked him, Can you see anything? And the man looked up and said, I can see people, but they look like trees walking. Then Jesus laid his hands on his eyes again and he looked intently and his sight was restored and he saw everything clearly. Then he sent him away to his home saying, do not even go into the village. Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. Lead me in the path of your commandments, that I may see the wonders of your law. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. Next is the Magnificat, the Song of Mary. Mary gave birth to the Word of God. Truly, she is the ever-blessed Mother of Christ our Lord. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Mary gave birth to the Word of God. Truly she is the ever-blessed Mother of Christ our Lord. Next are the prayers of intercession. Lord, this week we pray especially for all those returning to school again, after such a long period of disruption. We think of all the students and ask that you watch over them. Help staff to maintain safety rules in such a challenging situation. Help children benefit from the interactions of school life, academic and social. We remember in particular those who are vulnerable or who fear for vulnerable family members. Let society show support for teaching and support staff as they make such difficult adjustments for the well-being of pupils. We pray this month also for all those moving to university in these challenging circumstances and for their families. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the government of this country and for all who make decisions with far-reaching consequences. Lord, please grant them wisdom in their discernment and let care for the well-being of individuals and society be a driving force. We pray for those who feel under pressure to return to workplaces and for those who have no choice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are sick in body, mind or spirit. We pray for those who are hospitalised and separated from their loved ones. In our own local community, we pray again especially for Sheila and her family. We remember all those working in the medical and healing professions and all those who work in the systems that support them. Support them, Lord, as they brace themselves for growth in infection numbers, knowing the true impacts of the pandemic. Lord, in your mercy hear our prayer. We pray for those around the world who also face the pandemic, but alongside famine, extreme poverty and natural disasters. We think especially of those in the Lebanon as they continue without stable government. And we pray for those desperate people who seek better lives, who see no other safe routes and risk their lives in dangerous crafts at sea. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for your church around the world and here in the UK. Help churches to continue to find ways to serve their communities in these ever-changing times. Guide those who seek a church community to find one, even in these separated times. We pray for our bishops, Sarah and Rob, as they oversee changes in the diocese and work on interpreting government guidance. We pray for Father Matt and for our community here in New Southgate as we move into autumn and try to prepare for new challenges in the lead up to Christmas. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. Next is the collect. Almighty and everlasting God, who stooped to raise fallen humanity through the childbearing of Blessed Mary, grant that we, who have seen your glory revealed in our human nature and your love made perfect in our weakness, may daily be renewed in your image and conformed to the pattern of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks for joining me. See you soon. Bye.